This is Tradeflow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Tradeflow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Indian Oil Corp, the country's top refiner, Larsen and Tubro and Goldman Sachs-backed renewable energy producer Renew Power will form a joint venture to develop the green hydrogen sector, helping India cut its carbon emissions. The three companies have signed a binding term sheet to jointly develop green hydrogen projects, said a joint statement issued on Monday. India, the world's third biggest emitter of carbon dioxide, plans to annually produce 5 million tonnes of green hydrogen by 2030 as it seeks to meet its climate targets and become a production and export hub for the fuel. Oil jumped about 4% to over $108 a barrel on Monday, as mounting civilian deaths in Ukraine increased pressure on European countries to impose sanctions on Russia's energy sector, prompting new concerns from market participants around tighter supply. Global benchmark Brent crude was up $3.85, or 3.7%, to $108.24 a barrel by 11.21 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, 15.21 GMT. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude rose $4.11, or 4.1%, to $103.38 a barrel. Both contracts were down more than $1 earlier in the session. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said Russian President Vladimir Putin and his supporters would feel the consequences of events in Bukha, outside the capital Kyiv, where a mass grave and tied bodies shot at close range were found. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. The Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore, which oversees the world's biggest marine refueling hub, said it is investigating the suspected contamination of bunker fuel supplied to several ships in the port and had ordered supply of the batch to be halted. At least 14 ships that received tainted high sulfur fuel oil, HSFO, from Singapore suffered loss of power and engine problems, Veritas Petroleum Services, VPS, said late last week. We detected contamination in 34 fuel samples and we are aware of 14 vessels that have suffered damages. As VPS has 50% market share of global marine fuel analysis, then we can assume there may be more vessels affected, who do not test with VPS, the fuel and oil testing firm said in an email to Reuters on Monday. Russia maintained gas flows through key pipeline routes into Europe on Monday, despite uncertainty over payment terms and as the EU said it would significantly tighten further sanctions against Moscow amid allegations of war crimes in Ukraine. Physical gas flows through the Yamal Europe pipeline at Germany's Malnau border point C soared over the weekend and last stood at zero, data from operator Gasgate showed. Auction results showed gas giant Gazprom booked some upcoming westbound gas transit capacity via Yamal. It booked 4.9 million kilowatt hours per hour, kilowatt hour per hour, for Monday night and 1.4 million kilowatt hour per hour for Tuesday. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Gold rose on Monday as the prospect of further sanctions on Russia over its invasion of Ukraine bolstered bullion's safe haven appeal, though a stronger dollar and rising US Treasury yields capped to further rise. Spot gold was up 0.6% to $1,934.93 per ounce by 14.55 GMT, while US gold futures were up 0.8% to $1,938.90. There is a possibility of even higher inflation due to a pandemic-related shipping slowdown in China as well as the war in Ukraine, which bodes well for gold, said Daniel Pavilonis, senior market strategist at RJO Futures. The London Metal Exchange said on Monday it would commission an independent review into the events that led to chaos in the nickel market last month, and said it had introduced daily price limits for all its metals. The LME, the world's oldest and largest market for industrial metals, last month brought in 15% upper and lower daily price limits for all of its physically delivered metals plus cash-settled cobalt. The exchange suspended nickel trading on March 8 after prices spiked by more than 50% to hit $100,000 a ton. Activity resumed on March 16 when it launched daily price limits and the provision of OTC nickel trading data for the first time. 
We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Saudi Arabia's main state wheat buying agency the Saudi Grains Organization, SAGO, has agreed to buy 625,000 tons of wheat in an international tender, SAGO said on Monday. SAGO said it made the purchase at an average price of $422.47 a ton. That was up sharply from $365.14 a ton C&F paid in SAGO's previous wheat tender in December. Traders say Saudi Arabia is among importing countries hit by disruption to Ukrainian and Russian grain exports and surging prices of wheat and other commodities. The shipments will be delivered between September and November, the state grains importer said. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.